Hello everyone and welcome to a video on how to make realism overhaul configurations for parts that don't already have them. Uh, the mod that I'm going to be working with in this video is called Myerda Core Showcase and uh, let me go to the the forum page on it. So here, monitor capture. And so this is the idea. It's got sci-fi-ish parts and the reason I picked this is because first of all the parts are not are obviously not based on anything particularly real, so that presents an interesting challenge. And also, they're, they're, they are unique parts uh, that, you know, you can't really get anywhere else. So they provide, you know, possibilities of making unique ships, and that's what I want. Uh, because, you know, I've already got parts to make real rockets all over the place. Uh, what I want is unique parts. And these seem to be parts that would be conducive to something like KSP Interstellar. Uh, stuff that is more science fiction further out, but let's take a look at what this is like in Realism Overhaul before I've made any special configurations on them and see what work we need to do. So here we are and uh, this is uh, the Realism Overhaul install that I made in the videos where I told you how to build a Realism Overhaul install. And so the only additional mod that I've added on top of those that I did in those videos is this new mod and that's good because you don't want to have a lot of extra mods in otherwise it's going to be more complicated it's going to take a longer time to load the game and of course you're going to have to load the game a few times in order to make sure that the parts work properly so really you just want the basic uh, realism overhaul install plus the mod that you're working on and uh, in this case you can see uh, they should be marked non-rp0 right now uh, this is not from I, yeah, I don't think that's from the mod that I'm working on, but this is. So it's got a part like this, and, you know, it's up to you how you're going to use it. Uh, it certainly has a different shape than normal, so that's what we're looking for. At least that's what I'm looking for, and this is a bigger one. Uh, it is a apparently a lander thing. It's called Atlander. Uh, okay, that's a micro, that's a mini. So let's see what we need to work on as far as these command modules are concerned. Well, the sizing wise, uh, maybe it's not necessary to resize them. Uh, let's see what they look like compared to, say, uh, well, let's try a Mark II cockpit. Well, see, now that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? So we may want to resize them because they're not really in line with, with that. And now you could also just add tweak scale. Uh, right click on them reveals that obviously we need to work on the liquid fuel and oxidizer. This is a sort of a lander can thing with built in fuel I guess. And it's got reaction wheels so we're going to have to get rid of those. A uh, lot of electric charge consumption but that's fine for a lander can. Uh, except it's not really a lander can is it? This is seems to be an automated lander that doesn't have any crew in. So this is uh, these are actually crewless. So maybe they don't need to be that size. Uh, this looks more like a crude pod. This has crew capacity 1. Let's see how big that is. Maybe we don't need to uh, resize these Atlander ones since... Ooh, that's a super-sized one. Yeah, uh, since they don't have crew in any way. Well, that's pretty darn small, isn't it? Is there any... Uh, well, let's see. There's a Mark 1... Even the Mark 1 cockpit is huge compared to it. Yeah, so we're going to have to talk about how to resize these guys. Then again, this one is much bigger. Does it have a... no? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, it has the same crew capacity. Maybe we should just leave this tiny one as non-RO and just start with this larger one. Since this is already the right size, there's no point... Um, no point messing with this one. We can just leave this one non-RO. This one has a crew capacity of 2. Um, I think, reasonably speaking, that should have a larger crew capacity than two, right? Uh, maybe, maybe that's like a, a pod for like four people. I don't know, I don't think internals have been worked on. And I might just leave off this uh, T4 one, because it has the same crew capacity, and it's just much bigger, and the textures haven't been particularly improved upon. So the ones we really want to modify are these two, maybe. Okay, 
Now, one thing that is okay is anytime you have crew in, tack life support already adds some food, water, and oxygen. Uh, we do need to get rid of the mop propellant, liquid fuel, and oxidizer. Okay, so those are the pods. Let's quickly take a Oh, and there's other pods. That one I really like. I want to figure out something to do with that. Uh, this one... I... Does it have an engine? It has a gimbal, okay, so it has an engine. And a fuel tank, and a blader. The blader isn't very much for anything. We'll have to see whether that's useful. Well, it looks like it has, yeah, it has an engine. So we're going to have to modify that engine on this pod. And same with the dust bike pod, which is sort of cute. Uh, let's see, is this, uh, how many people does this hold? One. So let's see, Mark II cockpit. Uh, for a fighter class thing with somebody uh, lean back a bit and that's sort of a longish cockpit, it's not too bad. I think uh, we can keep it as is. Okay, and then uh, the Mark II cockpit looks like this. But there's two people in tandem, so... Yeah, I think it's alright. We don't have... We're not forced to resize it or anything. And resizing is the tough part, because you have to worry about the attachment nodes. Right, there's an attachment node here and down there, but if you resize the thing, maybe they'll automatically go with the model. But there's also the possibility that they will um, need to be moved. And you don't want to use the rescale factor. I'll go over that once we get to that part. But let's see what other things we need to do. And again, we take a look at the non-RP0 stuff. So here we have liquid fuel and oxidizer. And so we're going to have to turn this into a real fuel tank, obviously. All of these need to be turned into real fuel tanks. This this is a... Uh, well, okay, that's just... Uh, even though it's not RP0, that's from a different mod that, and it's already turned into a real fuel tank. The good thing about real fuel tanks is you can use it for anything. Uh, so, for instance, uh, this is a non... It says not RP0, but it's a real fuel tank. And so here, uh, we have that engine, right? Uh, the, there's an engine in here that uses liquid fuel and oxidizer right now. Well, you can fill it, up, uh, fill it up with liquid fuel and oxidizer if you want to. But if you put a different engine on, you can use it for anything else. So the real fuel tanks are actually more flexible and more useful for everything and easily, uh, easily modified. So it's just pref preferable to have them like that. And, they're, they become sort of agnostic as far as what engine you've got on your launcher, so that's just better, I feel. So uh, as far as fuel tanks go, that's all you need to do to them. Let's work on those two things first, the command modules and the fuel tanks first. Okay, so this is the folder and game data, the mod is in this folder. Now we remember the at lander 2, minimal equipments. I guess we can do that because it's it's uh, not crewed anyway. T2, landing cabin, combined with a small fuel tank. And this one is too big. All right. Uh, and really, you can see what happened here was uh, the mod itself used the rescale factor. I generally don't like that, but it's all right if the mod wants to do that. And you can see what happened with it. It's just the same model sized bigger so okay and and it's re, re, uh, referring to the same model file you see there's uh mm, hmm well it should be model dot anyway uh we will not we will not fiddle around with the mod like this we're not going to change the original configuration so what we do is we create a new configuration file and we say uh and let me get the an example of this so that I don't mess it up. It's always good to have examples and you can find examples in the realism overhaul folder of course but I've I've sort of made my own over time. So let's see this is my lackluster labs fuel tank thing and so we just need an at part sort of tag and then we'll have a close parentheses and so this is targeting the part and this part is at lander mini so we copy that, paste that. Okay, now we're going to mark it as work in progress. So that's percentage rssro config equals false. So now it's a work in progress part. Okay, and then what did we need to change? 
Well, uh, it has a reaction wheel. Let's just uh, do the getting rid of modules and resources first. So we need to get rid of these resources and the reaction wheel. So the way you do that is like this, exclamation mark resource liquid fuel, exclamation mark resource and uh, box oxidizer, and then we'll add a fuel tank to replace those. Instead of having it be a liquid fuel and oxidizer only, and also it had electric charge, we can keep the electric charge. I mean, it's, it is, since it has a probe core in it, we can keep the electric charge for that. But we also want to get rid of module reaction wheel. You can just add a reaction wheel if you want to. So that's done by module and then we can copy the module name so we don't make a mistake. If you want to just change the reaction wheel to make it less powerful you can say at module reaction wheel and then you can uh, identify these you can say at pitch torque equals and you can change the value to something a little bit less maybe 0.5 instead of the original 10 and maybe that'll be a more moderate sort of reaction wheel so that you can feel comfortable about using it in realism overhaul but I'll just get rid of it for now okay and then in place of the tanks that we had we're going to add a new fuel tank and um, it's I'm gonna call it a default fuel tank I think that's fine you could uh, you know fuselage fuel tank will be heavier and so maybe you want that, but we're talking about futuristic te technology. It'll be fine. It's like a composite material. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, let's say a thousand units for now. We'll see if that's appropriate, and I'll show you how to do that inside the game. So now we have a fuel tank with a thousand units, and it should be able to carry 450 units of liquid fuel and 550 units of oxidizer, as planned. And is there anything else we need to fix? Well, we might want to consider the mass. And if you want to use it in uh, RP0 career mode, you're going to have to figure out what cost will be appropriate, but I'm not going to handle that now. Um, max temp and skin max temp look fine. There's no reason to believe that those would be a problem. So, yeah. I mean, one thing you could do is... Um, well, let, let, let's move on. This one doesn't have any crew in. So let's do a somewhat more complicated thing and let's save this file now. So we're going to save it. Uh, yeah, this is being captured. Good. Uh, so we're going to save it in game data. And we're just going to put it out here or you can create your own particular folder. So if you want to go like a folder, new configs. Well, you can do that, or you can just dump it out here. It's fine. So uh, let's let's create a new configs folder and say uh, uh, let's do the stylization the same dot config. Okay, has to be dot config. All right, now we've done that one, or at least uh, I think it's all right. Yep, nothing pops out. Don't know about this emissive color thing. I wonder about that okay so now we we need another part and so we go on to go on to our next part and this is this Atlander 2 thing and this is a crude pod which means it has food water and ox uh, oxygen now we might want to consider whether this has hibernation since there is a crew module and how much uh, resource it actually takes up uh, well one one place to look at that is I don't actually want this folder, I want this folder. Uh, we want to take a look at Realism Overhaul, Suggested Mods, uh, the Squad Parts, and Command Modules. And you can see what they put for the stock Command Modules. And you can see a Service Module tank here with 100 volume, with electric charge, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Um, and how much electric charge does it take up doesn't seem to change that much there's a little module generator oh uh, it takes uh, 0.2 per second for life support so maybe it would be prudent to change this from 0.02 to 0.2 
the way realism overhaul does uh, electric charge consumption is a little bit different what wouldn't be bad is to copy like one of these tanks see this tank has food water and oxygen and in the tank for the carbon dioxide waste and waste water and also lithium hydroxide um, there's there's no particular reason why we can't just grab that and uh, instead of this module here we oops I copied instead of paste it. copy paste so now we have a life support tank in this particular lander can which is nice um, this is uh, the habitation module crew cabin though so maybe if you're going to copy something you should copy the lander can let's see pod cockpit land lander cabin small that sounds about right so let's copy whoa that's a lot of digits that's probably wrong let's truncate that a little bit okay so that's a good cockpit to copy all right and we don't need all these digits this is just ridiculous okay so now we have a service module tank with all that did we get rid of all the resources we meant to get rid of liquid fuel oxidizer um, mono propellant we need to get rid of mono propellant and since we have electric charge here we should get rid of electric charge outside the tank as well so electric charge and mono propellant but what if you want mod propel I mean what if you want some other resources except for the food see we have we don't have any fuel in here right now well uh, this original lander had 800 units of space right now this is only taking up 180 supposedly so we can just bump this up to 800 and there'll still be leftover space for whatever fuel you want to use and we haven't decided what fuel we're going to use in here now uh, let me make sure that there was a reaction wheel on it. I'm sure there was uh, that we are getting rid of yes yes there is you could again add a new reaction wheel you can modify this uh, let's uh, show you how to modify this ablator resource so you will say and the, the order doesn't I, I like to put the modifications on top so uh, we don't need to modify the name hmm copy there we go add amount maybe you want to make it a hundred ablator and of course we have to modify the max amount as well but really uh, these lander cans I don't know if they should be using ablator that's up to you you could just uh, exclamation mark resource ablator and get rid of the ablator on the pod so that's an option for you so this is good enough for this I think now one reason why I don't want to get into rescaling things right now is that uh, you see it does have an internal see it has an internal which means it has a, a internal view an IVA view and if you rescale the pod the it's possible that the IVA view will be messed up so that's the thing to consider in addition to the attachment nodes okay so that one is uh, we'll, we'll just call that done for now let me save this and let's just copy this one now we know that the Atlander 3 is just the Atlander 2 scaled up and it has two seats instead of just one so we change this to Atlander 3 and it should have the same resources that we're getting rid of and the same need for a tank but you can see that it's a larger tank uh, 2223 units so let's make that change 23 we need to double the food water and oxygen resources because now there are two occupants but we don't need to go by the same scale this is obviously more than double 800 but we don't need to scale up by that uh, let's just say 35 for now also it might be good to add a a little digit there I don't think that this is going to be cause a problem if you don't if you don't 
uh, make it a float instead of an integer. But uh, it's just good practice for coding in general to make sure that your integers look like integers and your floats look like floats, I guess. Okay, so that's done. And we don't anticipate anything else needs to be fixed. Uh, you, again, the blader thing, you can figure it out on your own. Um, it didn't actually have double the ablator as the other one. It had uh, 1.5 times. We'll just go with that for now. Okay, so that's another part done. Let's take a look at modifying the fuel tanks. Uh, since, I mean, I could go on with all the lander can uh, all the um, command modules but let's see about a fuel tank or two now what were those called um, MX things these are all MX tanks well let's work on those look now oh, that's interesting okay so what we want is one of the MX tanks here there's MX8 and we could just copy that now well, when you're actually doing this, you should just probably go straight down the list and modify things in order would probably be the most organized way of doing things, but I don't want to be tedious about it, so we're going to just hit upon each of the types of things and focus on that. We don't need the command module one anymore, or fuel tanks, and I want the new file to be off to the side here. Okay. So we're going to have an at part, and we're going to do our first tank. And we want to close that bracket. All right. So what do we need to do to this? Well, fuel tanks are easy. Woo, not what I wanted to copy. Fuel tanks are easy. All you have to do is get rid of the two resources that are in there and replace it with a tank. Uh, so uh, you might want to toy around with the max temperatures if that's uh, something that you're concerned about. Also, the dry mass might be a concern. We'll see once we've replaced the tank. But basically, we just uh, copy this get rid of resource stuff and paste it in here. Yeah, and then we will have a new tank, but we're not going to put all the stuff in because we're going to have it be configurable by real fuels and here we see uh, 5,000, 6,112 now those aren't necessarily the right numbers and again I'll show you how to check that and we don't want it to be a service module tank it's not carrying food, water, and oxygen if you're carrying food, water, and oxygen you have to make it a service module tank or uh, a life support tank uh, but this is just going to be a fuel tank, so we'll uh, default it to default. Uh, you might want to make it a cryogenic tank. You might want to make it um, selectable, but I'm not going to show you that right now. Uh, well, you can uh, see examples in the realism overhaul stuff. But right now we've got this tank done, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly uh, just copy this and do the other tanks. So we uh, the tanks are all easy. So you just copy that. Okay, so that's double actually. You can see by the file name that it's meant to be double the size. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, well it's double the diameter, but it's probably eight times the volume, or but it doesn't seem to be exactly that. Looks like fifty seven hundred six uh, fifty seven thousand six hundred. So, 57,600. Okay. Let me get rid of that, get rid of that. Next one up. This isn't as much bigger as I thought it would be. Six, 86,400. Okay. This must be a tiny one, yeah. Now we've forgotten something, and I wonder if you've spotted it. We really, really want to mark all our work in progress parts as work in progress to set them aside to make sure that we know which ones we've done something with and which ones we have not. So there's a thousand units. 
Okay, so that's a start, and now let's get the tag to make sure that those are marked as work in progress. Remember, this means that it's going to be marked as work in progress for realism overhaul. If it doesn't have the tag at all, that's when it's non-RO. Okay, well, we've done a few parts. Let's uh, reload the game and see how they look. All right, well, here we are, and I've noticed a slight flaw in my cunning plan. You see, uh, I've got RP0 in here, not just Realism Overhaul, and so these are still labeled non-RP0 because I didn't add the RP0 tag, even though I added the Realism Overhaul tag. So you can see uh, this part, uh, part not supported by RP0 or RO, but this one, which I did modify, says part not supported by RP0, RO in progress. Now, if I didn't have RP0 in, up here it's, it would say uh, work in progress RO. Uh, but uh, right now, because of RP0, I didn't put that, that tag in, which is a different tag and it looks different. Um, yeah, it's not indicating that. So, but anyway, otherwise uh, things have sort of worked. If we take a look at this Atlander T2, uh, we note that it does have a modular fuel tank and that modular fuel tank already has some resources in so if we have this open and we right click food water and oxygen lithium hydroxide electric charge we can show UI and we get the normal real fuels um, user interface with the electric charge and everything and if we wanted to add some engines on it I don't know this uh, well that's a really silly engine to put on but um, let's say it's just this AJ-10-137. Well then, if we right-click on here, we can just click the right fuel for it. Now, of course, if you want to change that engine, you're going to have to manually go in here and remove those fuels and make sure you don't remove the food, water, and oxygen as well. Maybe we should pick a different lander engine. That's pretty big too. Era B only has one ignition. We could have a whole array of little one kilonewton thrusters but that's not going to be very powerful for it. We'll have to see about that. Asterisk? I use uh, the asterisk a lot. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, and actually there's sort of room to tuck it in there. So we could make it look like that, and then you can get the Aerozine and N204 for the asterisk engine, and if we take a look at MechJeb, it shows us with 1,538 meters per second and a healthy thrust to weight ratio. So, all good there, and then you can put the RCS thrusters that will be configured for um, Arizona N204. And I'll have to go over uh, how to configure engines. Uh, so next time we'll talk about engines, and I'll see if I have time for RCS thrusters. But this pod is uh, pretty well configured. It seems to be ready to go. Uh, dry mass 1.1 tons wet mass 2 tons with the Arizona N204 and we can see that uh, make sure that it properly reduces mass when you get rid of uh, resources and yes it does so it carries about a ton of fuel now the question is is that appropriate right so when we add the fuel in here we've got about seven uh, yeah about 700 units of fuel uh, how big a tank does it take to fit 700 units of fuel so let's just put this tank uh, on this node, right on the side here. Let us put Arizona N204. And uh, it looks like if we size it, uh, get a little bit more utilization, we can see that this is 336, 361. This one has a little bit more fuel. And it can fit, but this pod has a Kerbal in as well. So you might want to go back into the configuration and say, well, maybe, maybe it's... Well, then again, uh, if the Kerbal is fitting in here, there's easily enough volume on this bit and that bit to fit the fuel. So it seems reasonable to assume that this amount of fuel can fit in here somehow. But that's up to you, uh, whether you want to maybe scale that back a bit and reconsider. Um, it would be nice if this had built-in landing legs, but... Obviously, if you want to make uh, use it as a lander, you're going to need to add uh, landing. Okay, good. Uh, landing struts, then probably not ones that are that big. But anyway, you can figure that out for yourself. Let's take a look at other fuel tanks and make sure they have a sort of basic sanity check going. So we had configured these fuel tanks, and you note that now they do not have liquid fuel and oxidizer at all. They're just a happy little fuel tank. 
right? And there's a normal fuel tank, very fancy, and it can be used for anything. It could be used for interstellar fuels, it can be used for uh, whatever you like, and the Astros engine, or if you want to have bimodal NTR, well, I don't know why those are squished, but here's a bimodal NTR. Okay, uh, so it uses liquid hydrogen, and now you can put the liquid hydrogen in. The downside is hydrogen takes a lot of volume, but you can put hydrogen in, and let's see if, uh, let's do a sanity check on that uh, in various ways. So, again, we find our procedural fuel tank. Let's uh, make it the same sort of shape and size. and put hydrogen in. Well, in this case, uh, this, this shape looks pretty much the same size as that shape. Maybe it's a little bit longer. Okay, and here we've got a thousand units of liquid hydrogen. Here we've got 3,388. Now is that just a hydrogen thing? Well, no, it shouldn't be. Um, that, because that's measuring in liters. So even if we have this XLR99 space plane engine on the right node. Yeah. So now we'll remove that tank and add the appropriate fuels for that. We see that obviously this tank is underwhelming as far as what it's uh, carrying. It's got a thousand units of volume, whereas this tank, which for all, I mean, it seems like it's actually smaller, uh, actually has 3,300. So we need to go back in the configuration and change this to 3,300. And we need to review the other tanks as well. So, I mean, but it's an easy change to make. So let's just go back and do it. Okay, and the one we were working on here, make sure you get the right tank, uh, was this one, right? Um, 0625-SB. So over here, SB. So we want that to be 3300. Okay, so we've got that. And also note that its dry mass is 0.6 tons, whereas this fuel tank, uh, its dry mass is only uh, 0.1 tons. So this is not advantageous. Now you can figure that maybe the extra mass is all the design work. I mean, you could think that, or you can decide that uh, that's a bit excessive and it's uh, disadvantageous to that particular part. Then you can just uh, take a look at the original part file. So let's open that up. So here we see, what is its mass? 0.6, right? That's dry mass. We want to change that to 0.1. So that's simple enough. Copy and up here at mass 0.1 and that should do the trick. So you might want to resize the other tanks as well. Now, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, you could keep the original mass. Now remember, once you've uh, changed the volume on this, and we can get rid of the monitor capture, once you've changed the volume on this uh, to fit that, now it's gonna also carry more liquid fuel and oxidizer and more efficiently too because you've uh, reduce the dry mass of it. So it's a good deal, especially if you're in real uh, realism overhaul to do all these things. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we can take a look at some of the other parts. This is a smallish one. Let's, let's try a bigger one. Ooh, that's maybe too big. How about something? Yeah, that, that's good. Let's, yeah, let's... Okay, that was the root part. Okay. Now that's obviously not going to work, and let's let's have a control core too while we're at it, just uh, to see what kind of rocket we're actually dealing with here. So this is seven tons dry. Obviously, we're going to want to reduce the dry mass of this as well, and this looks like it could do with a bigger engine. RD58. The 3 to 1 ratio between the start mass and end mass is way bad. Even stock tanks are not that bad, so we need to re rework that. Um, and that's down to density of stock fuels, I think. And obviously this tank is going to need more volume as well. So let's take a look. And another consideration is 
well, this tank might have a high dry mass, but it also has higher heat tolerance, right? Over here, you see the max temp is 2300 Kelvin. That's pretty high. If you take a look at the procedural tank that we're comparing it to, this only has 800 to 900 Kelvin heat tolerance. So maybe you want to make this tank a little bit heavier because uh, you can see that that's what's contributing to its higher heat tolerance. But still, it's not going to be six times as heavy. Okay, well, obviously, uh, this needs maybe four times as much fuel as what it has right now. And you could just uh, add these numbers up and make it that volume. So those are the things that we consider when making realism overhaul command pods and tanks. So uh, after you do that, you're basically good to go unless you want to resize the pods. Now, some of the pods have engines, like this one had an engine, and we'll deal with that in the engine section in the next video. So I'll save it for later. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope uh, it leads to many more parts being converted for realism overhaul usage, especially, you know, unique parts like these. And I look forward to that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.